Hello and welcome to the Cobalt Retro Shop. Hope you're having an amazing day. Now, the start of this video is coming hot off the heels of another Sega Genesis video. I really hope I'm going to be able to figure out what the heck's going on with the other Sega Genesis that I have. Because for some reason, this one was outputting a PAL signal. Um, granted, I haven't tried a different game, but this is a Sega Genesis, not a Mega Drive. Under no circumstances should this be putting out a PAL signal. So, let's plug in Steel Talons here, and see if the same thing happens here. It would help if the system was plugged in. See? See, this is what the other system was supposed to do. I'll uh, splice in footage from the other console, but the other console was outputting a PAL signal for some reason. Let's go ahead and get a controller plugged in so we can test the ports, or at least one of the ports. And of course, it's missing a foot. Oh yeah, sometimes I forget this game runs at like 2 FPS. Well, I mean, everything looks like it's working, um, so, cool. I guess the only thing I have to do at this point is to clean the system. So it looks like the Sega Genesis only used Philips screws to hold itself together, unlike a lot of Nintendo systems. Looks like this thing will come off. All right. Of course, there's a massive heat shield in the way. Now, just taking another look at the top channel here, it does look like there's a little bit of a sticker residue that was pro probably a, a price tag of some sort, something going on up here too. Overall, compared to the other system, it's not that dirty, but still does need to clean. So the funny thing about things like this RF shield is it's really here more for FCC compliance more than actually being needed for like heat sink purposes, stuff like that. So in reality, I think in most circumstances, these systems don't really need them. The Nintendo, the Sega Genesis, they don't really need those guys. Right now, I'm just taking them off just to uh, inspect the board, make sure there's no hidden corrosion or anything like that. And so, we've gotten to the board of the Sega Genesis. Looking over all these capacitors, they actually look in really good shape. I don't see any bulletin capacitors. I don't see any capacitor juice on the board. I think we are good. I don't think I really need to go any further than this because I think the power LED light is working. Even if it isn't, you don't really need it to. And the power switch seems to be working. The reset button. I'm definitely going to need another foot for this guy. Um, yeah, everything looks... A-okay, so all it needs is a little bit of a clean, and it should be good. At this point, everything is cleaned, looking pretty good, actually. Um, might be one tiny little spot here that's given me a little bit of a problem here, the previous label, but otherwise, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, that glassy plastic's not going to like a melamine sponge, so I'm not going to deal with that. Um, we'll just call that good. So, uh, we're going to grab 
the other half of the system here and the RF shield. We're going to put this back on, screw everything in, and we're going to call it good. I mean, everything looks fine to me, so I think I'm good to put this back together. So surprisingly, this console is actually in really good condition, especially after uh, cleaning it up. It obviously does have some signs of wear. It's got a little bit of scratching here and here, but that's fairly normal for a console like this. Um, I guess I could, uh, in some of these spots, stick a melamine sponge to the plastic, but I actually kind of don't want to do that, as that uh, so sometimes can mess with the texture of the plastic. Um, and in the case of this ring here, uh, that can actually make glossy plastic look worse. So, the last thing I need to pay attention to on this system is this missing foot here. Now, I looked. I looked really hard to find a local replacement for uh, rubber feet that look like this. Uh, I couldn't find any. I could order some online, but I don't want to wait. So I went ahead and got some at the store. Unfortunately, they don't look like these feet, but I'd rather have something than nothing. And frankly, they're probably not really gonna be noticeable while on the system. And that'll be it for this video. Not a whole lot today, just cleaning up a Sega Genesis. Ended up working just fine, didn't really need to do much with it. If you are interested in potentially buying this unit or anything else up in the Cobalt Retro Shop eBay store, that's linked in the description, along with some other ways to support me directly, including my music and my Patreon page that starts at $1 a month. Speaking of my patron page, I have to thank my Kilo supporter, Indian Mac, for helping make Cobalt Retro Tech possible. Thank you. With all that being said, I'll see y'all in the next one.